leadership then, hired. What was going through your head once the vote gavel down? It was official McCarthy wasn't speaker. We, we got to move to the next step. You know, we, we are not at the end of this process, okay? At, at most, we're approaching halftime. Uh, we've got to be able to assemble a governing coalition. We have to build from a place of trust. The reason Kevin McCarthy went down today is because nobody trusts Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy has made multiple contradictory promises, and when they all came due, he lost, he lost votes of people who maybe don't even ideologically agree with me on everything. Take, for example, my colleague from South Carolina, Ms. Mace. She's, she has different views than I do on a variety of subjects, but what we had in common, Kevin McCarthy lied to but all of us. But Congressman, hold on a second. You're, Congress talking, you're saying that nobody trusts Kevin McCarthy. You're talking about, including yourself, about seven Republicans compared to about 200 and, and, seven, and about, nine, you know, nine, some odd Republicans eight. who actually do trust him. So can you kind of explain yes. that? Yes. Well, well that? as it turns out, Getting 200 Republicans to trust you isn't enough to Wait, stay speaker. Compared to Congress seven at this Republicans point, at this point, have you spoken to any... former President Trump about this since the ousting? Was he supportive of the what, of what you were doing? Uh, I have spoken to President Trump over the last several days. The ousting only occurred several minutes ago, so we haven't spoken during former that time. President Trump, though, put on, you he put on Truth Social speaker? that he didn't think this was a good idea. He didn't want to see Republicans fighting with other Republicans. How do you respond to the former president? Uh, I, I would. Uh, I would say that uh, my conversations with the former president leave me with great confidence that I'm doing the right thing. Did the former president call you today? Did the, the former president call you today? Did 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 the former president call you today? I would say that the conservative agenda was being paralyzed by Speaker McCarthy. We had McCarthy. We hadn't even sent a, a subpoena to Hunter Biden. Our oversight was lackluster. Our spending priorities were misaligned. The top line budget was gonna lead to more inflation, more debt, more challenges. So the best way to advance the conservative agenda is to move forward with a new speaker. So are you gonna require, you gonna require that any future speaker elected allows the motion to vacate to stay at a one person threshold? Yes. I think anything that people have said before the McCarthy ouster uh, is probably uh, bearing less weight than the way people may be thinking about these questions after the McCarthy. Mr. Gage, you had some positive comments about Steve Scalise yesterday and today. Will you yourself nominate Steve Scalise for Speaker of the House? Maybe. I, I want to see, I want to hear from him. I mean, I, I'm not here to make a judgment on where Mr. Scalise stands with his rehabilitation and recovery. I, I would give him the deference to be able to decide whether or not he'd like to put himself forward as a candidate, but he'd be the type of person that I could, I could see myself supporting. There are many people, though. I, I could see myself supporting Tom Emmer. I could see myself supporting Mike Johnson of Louisiana. I could see myself supporting Jody Arrington of Texas. I could see myself supporting Kevin Hearn uh, of Oklahoma. And there are even people outside of the United States Congress like Lee Zeldin, who are well thought of across every aspect of our conference, and I may give Lee Zeldin a call and see if he's interested in the gig. You've succeeded in pushing the House to move forward with, with the appropriations processes you wanted. You've succeeded. Thank, in thank you for that acknowledgement, because I just heard on the floor a bunch of these McCarthy allies say, well, gosh, it's Kevin McCarthy who led us to this moment with uh, single subject appropriations bills, and in fact, the only work we've gotten done has been with a political gun to the Speaker. So you've gotten that accomplished. The former Speaker, I should You've say. gotten the Speaker out, said, what's next? Well, the next we got to elect a new speaker. Sorry, guys. How long do you think it's Are you running wait, for wait, governor wait, of Florida in 2026? Excuse no. Excuse me. If nobody you support can get to 18, how long does this go on? What do you say to Mr. Trump, who says uh, the, the, the infighting isn't helping? <laughs> no comments, Mr. Trump, on his truth. I made a comment about that earlier. You may have missed it. All right, Heidi Heitkamp, I want to make sure you get a word here. Uh, as you heard Matt Gates there saying that no one trusts a McCarthy, which is how uh, they've ended up now without a House Speaker. But uh, you heard reporters in the crowd saying, but that's not exactly true. There were Republicans that came to McCarthy's defense. At the same time, there's a trust factor with Matt Gates as well, uh, who has been embroiled in a number of investigations and also is using this opportunity, clearly loving the cameras and, and the reporters chasing him down. This opportunity uh, to fundraise uh, as he's hoping to, to run for governor. So bottom line, political hot mess on both sides. And now the House is paralyzed. Well, Matt Gates couldn't have done this alone. Let's acknowledge that. He had a number of people. He, he knew how to get his vote count. And let's, let's give him some credibility. He's pretty quick on his feet on the floor. And so 
He's confident. He's certain in what he's doing. But now he's got a mess on his hands because they've got to decide how to govern. And the likely candidate, I think, would be Steve Scalise. But his health challenge may keep him out of the, the dialogue. The one thing I want to say is there's been like, oh, the, the right and the left are the same. Nancy Pelosi was given a very, very strong progressive caucus that she had to manage in a very narrow majority. Guess what? She never got a motion to vacate. And so Kevin McCarthy entered this a weakened uh, speaker. This was inevitable. I think that the deal that he did on the debt limit, everybody was touting that. His, his acolytes were touting it. But I think Matt Gates said it right. It's perceived by Republicans across the country as a giveaway to Democrats. And then he backed out of the deal eventually. And so, you know, McCarthy owned some of this. Yes, Gates is a difficult character. He was able to bring enough people along to do something historic. But McCarthy failed to try or, or to basically hang on to his leadership and and his speakership. And uh, he's the first speaker in the history of this country to be removed by a vote of the body. And that's quite a legacy for Kevin McCarthy. Since 1910, Heidi and uh, the rest of our political team, thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.